message urbo i would like to and introduce I'll be myself as your so moderator for the day also good afternoon and as you know the department of english at the department of english college for joining us is organizing a webinar series which is titled artistic sap and psychological landscape the department of english at the department of english college and today is our webinar webinar of the series which is titled artistic and sap the speaker of the day is dr jobi sarya he is a senior fellow today and our moderator of the webinar of the series at brain like studio psychiatry center ट so and we are also open for registration for all these events that are being held about the next two webinars and, and it is i think uh, we can officially start the meeting so, and we are also open for in the absence of our beloved hod we may be doing about the next two webinars i think it and it is i think that uh, we can officially start the meeting and we are also open for in the absence of our beloved hod we may be doing about the next two webinars thank you shruti and it is i think that hello and a very good afternoon to you all of a new way of life and learning desperate times calls for desperate measures and here we are of a new team pegasus way of, of saint stephen's college urbo presenting you times with all calls for desperate measures with the webinar and here we are of a new team pegasus way of saint stephen's and psychological landscape present covid 19 with and all calls for desperate measures with the webinar as begin we are with a formal well artist against as way at the very outset of the landscape i take this opportunity to welcome our principal with the webinar as begin lally k siri whose constant at the very outset has been a key factor in the realization welcome to this webinar principal with the welcome to this webinar lally k siri this series at the very outset has been a three sessions and today welcome we begin with our first session of this webinar engaged by dr jobi this series is very comprised of three sessions of this webinar dr jobi we are current with our senior consultant in neuropsychiatrist by dr jobi brain work neuropsychiatry center for this session he has to be subject to 15 years of valuable experience 
Consulting as senior consultant in his sales at Great Manchester Financial Health Trust. He has to register his deep knowledge as promoted institutions like the University of Manchester at Indo American Hospital Vital Health Trust and St. Peter's Hospital to his deep knowledge to avail his health as a visiting lecturer at the University of Manchester. He is well known for his ardent academic enthusiasm and meritorious being academic health advice as a visiting lecturer. And this meticulous academician has he is well known for his MBBS from Medical College Korea, as an MRC in Psychology from the Royal College of Psychiatrists in London. He has completed his membership in Neuropsychiatry and MBBS from MEHDA from Europe and MRC in Psychology from the Royal College of Psychiatrists in London, Germany. He has completed his membership in North West. It's an honor to have you today, Germany. I'm sure that this is going to be a very insightful and informative session. It's an honor to have you today, Germany. I'm sure that this is going to be a very informative and informative session. It's an honor to have you today, Germany. I'm sure that this is going to be a very informative and informative session. It's an honor to have you today, Germany. I'm sure that this is going to be a very informative and informative session. It's an honor to have you today, Germany. I'm sure that this is going to be a very informative and informative session. It's an honor to have you today, Germany. And depth welcome to the information session for complying with all our requests and being a part of research scholar. Welcome all and students. students. I also welcome the members of the managing and organizing committee and our efficient duo, the coordinators, Ms. Shruti Elsa Jalshan and Ms. Mia Matthew. I also welcome my joy of being done here. I conclude wishing you all a very good life in the coordinators. Thank you. Ms. Shruti Elsa Jalshan and Ms. Mia Matthew. I also welcome my joy of being done here. I conclude wishing you all a very good life in the coordinators. Thank you. Our dear principals, so officially launch the webinar series and address the priority for what we address. Wishing and all a very good day in the morning. Our dear principals, so officially launch the webinar series and address the priority for what we address. Wishing and all a very good day in the morning. Thank you. You all are getting me clear. Our dear principals, so officially launch the webinar series and our most distinguished speakers of the day, Dr. Jobi Sarya. You are a psychiatrist, head of the department of and the most distinguished chairman of the day. Chief Coordinator for Jobis Career. Today, actually, you are a psychiatrist, head of the department of coordinators of the series and the most distinguished chairman of the day. Chief Coordinator for Jobis Career. Today, honourable participants, psychiatrists, and my dear colleagues. And of the department coordinators of the series and the in the background of the and the subject coordinator of global lockdown today, honorable colleagues, it is a pressure that and my department of English and the institution college of the city is launching a webinar in the background of the artistic interface of global and psychological landscape, it is a pressure that and the department of English and the institution college of the art and literature is launching a webinar to all of us to get lost in the space of global and lower the fear of negative effects. And I congratulate the Department of English for taking the lead and the best of the all of us to get lost in the space of global and lower the fear of the current living in a very interestingly and interesting time. If this COVID-19 situation continues to go like this, our grandchildren may not believe if we tell them that we used to start our meetings with prayer song and lighting lamps instead of sending invite links. But this has become the new normal and new reality. And it might not be very easy for everyone to adapt to these sudden changes. Most of us are afraid to accept the reality, relate to the reality, and live in the reality. Accepting the reality and relating to it comes at the cost of tremendous psychological efforts. And Art has always been a good friend of humanity, as art is one of the helping hands for a confused and unstable mind. Currently, it is essential to have art and literature as an efficient method of productive diversion because they provide a platform for alter realities and often unrealities, which can be the savior of an unstable mind. Such productive diversion yields productive and positive results. The example of Vincent Van Gogh 
and edgar allen poe are there and i would also like to like you to suggest read the story of christopher hagens published in the latest issue of madhubhumi weekly christopher hagens was a school dropout and drug addict in 2011 he was sentenced to 25 years of imprisonment following a murder committed by him in the isolation of jail he came to love numbers and mathematics now he is a famous mathematician living in jail school dropout but published several several articles and solved many puzzles of number theory our chief speaker dr jobi skaria consultant neuropsychiatrist in prestigious institutions in india and uk is the apt person to explain the chemistry behind isolation and lockdown leading to creativity i am sure today's lecture literature and art as an escape from psychological issues pertaining to the times of corona first lecture of the webinar series organized by department of english will be a guiding part to the same i once again congratulate department of english i wish this seminar to be an eye opener and great success thank you all thank you so much principal for your kind words now very gladly i invite the speaker of the day dr jobi skaria for the talk over to you sir thank you very much so shall i uh, upload the presentation now yes you can so currently i am presenting the screen so are you able to see that now yes okay i am getting a response yes are you able to hear me properly yeah okay that's fine <clears throat> so i'm good afternoon everyone good afternoon my dear students uh, i am dr jobi skaria i am a consultant neuropsychiatrist working for brainworks neuropsychiatry center that is in kottayam that is near pallam in kottayam and thank you very much for all the introductions already i, I do not want to repeat any of them any more i would like to thank st stephen's college urumur especially our principal madam professor lalli kesari hod professor bindu charyan and our moderators for today which is sudhi elsa professor navida jos and professor niya math i would like to extend my thanks to everyone uh, who is listening to me as well without you all there is no point in me presenting so i would like to thank each one of you to give me an opportunity to present today in st stephen's college urumur so the topic that's given to me today is literature and art as an escape from psychological issues pertaining to corona times so i would like to give you uh an introduction but just before that i would like to tell you all that i would like to make it more interactive so if you have any doubts or if you have any anything to say you can always type in in the conversation box there and i'll be able to read that in between but there are some limitations to be honest while we do the presentations online it is not like face to face contacts so most of the questions we will discuss and i will answer the questions in the end after the presentation but if there is anything you can let me know in between as well so in this presentation i would like to give you an overview of covid 19 first a lot of people know about covid 19 what it is but there may be certain elements that people were not sure about so i will give you an overview of covid 19 first then we will go through the effect of covid 19 
both positive and adverse effects. There are a lot of positive effects that happened because of this. And there are adversities, especially there are psychological issues during COVID-19. So I will go through that. Then the next point is basically how the literature and art help us during the COVID-19. And what, what are the basic neurological principles related to that? Why it is helping us? I'll go through that and then finally we will discuss about the role of literature and art in preventing or managing psychological issues. But this is an interactive part. I don't know how you are going to interact. You can always type in whatever you think it is. Uh, this is an afternoon and people may be feeling sleepy. So you can go through, you can answer the questions. When I ask, these are some simple questions. I am just going through five of them. So somebody is telling me to maximize the slides. I tried that before, but if I maximize it, uh, I won't be able to see you. It's, it's quite difficult. Are you able to see the slides? Can you type? Can somebody type whether you can able to see the sli slides properly? Okay, that's fine. That is fine. Now, there are some technical issues in me uh, getting the uh, slides bigger. We tried that yesterday as well. So my first question is basically what percentage of people confirmed to have COVID-19 develop mild to moderate symptoms? A, 20%, B, 40%, C, 80%. Is it possible for one of you to answer? Okay. So somebody answered 20%. Yeah. I'm not waiting for everybody to answer. Uh, yeah. The all, all the answers that I have seen so far, unfortunately, that's not correct. The right answer is 80%. So out of the confirmed COVID cases, Nearly, nearly two crores of them are there already. Out of that, nearly 80% of the people have got only mild to moderate symptoms. Only 20% of people have got severe symptoms. And the death rate is only 2% so far. So the next question is, who is at highest risk of developing severe COVID-19 symptoms? A, children, B, people over 60 years, C, pregnant women, and D, people with pre-existing medical conditions. You can answer two questions. You can mark two questions. Sorry, two answers. B and D, a lot of people answered B and D or D. Uh, you're absolutely right. It is B and D. So people over the age of 60, and people with pre-existing medical conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, kidney problems, uh, cancers, those who are on medications which lower the immunity, those kind of people are at high risk of developing COVID-19 symptoms. So it looks like most of us have got an idea about what's going on at the moment. In this picture, you are seeing a dog who is wearing a mask uh, this is a picture from Thailand. Uh, people were quite scared nowadays whether uh, the animals can transmit the illness. So the question is basically, can my dog give me COVID-19? A, yes, and B, no. Yeah, most of the people has answered right, it is no. Uh, there is no evidence uh, that dogs or animals could transmit this COVID-19. Uh, there were some reports that there was a tiger in a zoo who was tested positive in America, but that's uh, not a confirmed thing. Uh, but the good news is the domestic animals that we have at home, our pets, uh, they are not susceptible to this infection and they are not spreading the infection. So no is the answer for that question. 
The next question is, how many countries and territories are affected by COVID-19? Is it more than 50 countries and territories, more than 100, C, more than 150, and D, more than 200? Yeah, people are answering 100 and 150. Uh, but the correct answer is D, which is more than 200. So if you could go into a website called worldometers.com, it gives you an update about the number on a daily basis. So more than 210 countries, more than 200 countries and a few territories are affected, which are islands in different places. And also there are three ships which, which are affected uh, who are uh, resting in the sea basically for the past several months. So more than 200 is the correct answer there. And I'll go to the final question. From where coronavirus got its name? A, due to their leaf-like projections. B, due to their ground-like projections. C, due to their surface structure of bricks. D, none of them. Everybody is getting it right. Uh, you can, corona means crown. So it's a crown-like projections uh, of the coronavirus. That's the reason why it has got its name. Okay, I will, I'll first of all give you an overview uh, about coronavirus so that we will be able to understand what's going on at the moment and then we'll slowly come on to our topic. So COVID-19 coronavirus, is coron was coronavirus even before here? What do you think? Is, the, is it a virus that was well known for years? What do people think? This, this virus has been well known for several years. I, I was uh, learning my medicine in Kota Medical College that was in 1996-97 time. And in our textbooks, the coronavirus was still there. So what happened is the type of coronavirus, the lot of mutations happened. Mutations means change in their structure of DNA or RNA. And that led to the formation of new strains. So that is why in between SARS and MERS emerged, but it was just an epidemic. Epidemic means it was only affecting a specific part of the, uh, of the world. But this time round, unfortunately, it became a pandemic. So it was it, it spread to several areas of the world. So this time, after the mutations, it emerged as a new form and we have given the name called COVID-19. 19 is because it emerged in December 2019 and COVID, the name came from the projections that you see on top of the virus. So a virus means it may contain just a small particle of RNA or a DNA. In this, this is an RNA type of virus and there is a cover, it is covered by phospholipid layer. This covering is basically phospholipid layer means it is a combination of proteins and lipids, protein and fat. So that's the reason why when you wash the hands with soap and water, it's very easy to wash it off from your hands. So it's very similar to um, what we do uh, when we take bath. After the oil, if you take uh, bath with the soap, the oil layer will go. It's the same same principle. The phospholipid layer will get destroyed if you wash the hands with soap and water. And this, the outbreak started in Wuhan, which is a province called Hubei province in China. That was in December 2019. And in March 2020, WHO declared it as a pandemic. Mainly, the coronavirus infects the lungs. But it can affect other organs as well, like the digestive system. It affects the stomach and the intestines. It can affect the throat and the nose. It can affect brain as well. So the symptoms may vary. So what we say is the core symptoms include fever, cough, shortness of breath, and loss of smell and taste. So that's the four major symptoms. But there are other minor symptoms as well, like sore throat, headache, all these things could, could happen. 
but if you look at the initial four symptoms and if you have those symptoms you need to uh, go and consult the doctor the method of transmission again you all know most of us know that it spreads through droplets and it may be there on some surfaces it can it can present on the surfaces like steel for nearly one week to ten days so it's it's important that we need to sanitize uh, the door handles and all especially in the public places no need to do that at, in our home and we are wearing we are uh, asked to wear the masks that's mainly because of this spread through the droplet uh, infection the infection can spread through droplets it, it may not uh, be there in the atmosphere for a long time but recently the WHO studies have shown that it may be in the atmosphere for up to eight hours so it's still confirmed there is as you all know there is no treatment now and there are lots of ongoing researches going on across the world to develop a vaccine against this virus and hopefully we will be able to get that by the end of this year and that will be the end of the whole drama. We may need to carry on um, as a new normal for the time being. So, um, in order to develop any physical health problems because of coronavirus or psychological difficulties, we need to first be alert and make sure that we prevent it before developing. So there are different preventative strategies that we could do and that's already there in the government website everybody is saying in order to prevent three things that you need to do which is social distancing mask and hand washing i'm not going through that in detail at all so there are a lot of new terms new english words that we learned uh, recently uh, we were not very used to some of the words like quarantine and lockdown and reverse quarantine and so we are using those terms nowadays. What is quarantine means? Quarantine is basically you are isolating yourself to stop spreading an infection. So this word quarantine was there for use, used to be there for a long time. People used to use that, but nowadays we are using it more frequently because a lot of people needs to go into quarantine. And what is reverse quarantine means? Reverse quarantine is a method of prevention for the elderly people. We are advising the elderly people to stay at home or quarantine themselves in order to prevent them from contacting the virus. But the normal quarantine means once you have a contact with the virus, you are going. Or if you feel that there is a chance of contact, that is why people who are coming from uh, abroad or from other states in the flight, they are all going on quarantine because the risk is very high. Okay, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm slowly slipping on to our topic now. Um, first of all, I would, uh, I'm just trying to figure out what's the actual meaning of quarantine. There, it's not just a word meaning, isn't it? It is an emotional meaning as well to that word quarantine. It is not very easy for a person to be uh, indoors all the time. You can see the face of an old lady in this picture who is quite desperate. She's looking very desperate. If you could look carefully uh, into her eyes, she is expecting somebody. She's actually standing near the window, looking through the glass doors, and she's waiting for someone, or she's eager. She is quite, uh, looks maybe quite upset. So there are lots of emotions attached to that face. So a person who is in quarantine for several weeks or several months, because most of our elderly parents are in quarantine for nearly four months now. So they started being in those from March onwards. So you could possibly see similar faces in your parents' face or in your grandparents' face. So I would like to tell my experience during COVID-19. Every, every country is got locked down in March. I was I went to UK on the 1st of March, hoping that I will be able to work there for six weeks. So that was the plan. And my wife and children, they were all planning to come to 
UK on the 20th of March and we were planning for three weeks together there and to come back here. But unfortunately, lockdown happened on the 15th of March. I was working in the community there. Community means we are only doing outpatient clinics for uh, neuropsychiatry patients and for psychiatry patients. But there was a government policy there at that time. They told that all the doctors needs to be redeployed to work in the COVID wards as well. Like I, I was asked to work in uh, a psychiatric ward and also in a medical ward. In my psychiatric ward, there were nearly seven corona patients, and in the other ward, it was almost full of corona patients. So that could create a lot of anxieties within me, even though I am a doctor, uh, anybody, even if you are a doctor or even if uh, you have got a lot of experience, you may feel really anxious. So I was going through an anxiety phase at that time. And being away from family can add on to that anxiety because you are on your own and they couldn't come and join me. So I was on my own in just one apartment and I was going to work i was going to work with the corona patients so it could lead to anxiety and that happened with me as well i was quite anxious during that time uh, and also uh, feelings of isolation could creep in as well i was feeling like that yeah there is nobody around and then a lot of thoughts goes through our head so we will think that oh if something happens and if i get the infection what will happen? They might admit me into ICU and I may die there. But even there are issues like if you die there, you, you will be buried there. You are not going to, your body is not going to even take to India. So even all those kind of thoughts could go through your mind. So at that time, I was going through that difficult time. Then I continued working there and I attempted to come back. Uh, I was trying for nearly two months to come back and finally I got a place, I got a ticket in the repatriation flight on the 27th of June. And there were a lot of government restrictions there. I had to do a coronavirus test before flying, so I, I had to arrange for that. And it was tested negative, then I came in and I landed in Cochin in the end on the 27th of June. Then the next step, that's again uh, our government policies, we all say that uh, we need to go into quarantine. So I completely agree with that because anybody who is coming in a flight, they need to be in quarantine because the, there is very high chance that you could get the infection while you are in the flight for nearly 12 or 13 hours. So you could get the virus. So the, the risk is very high. So you need to be in quarantine for at least 28 days. It's usually 14 days and then you need to be at home for another 14 days without going out at all. So on the 26th, 25th of July, I came out of quarantine. So that was like in coming out of prison. So you feel like you are coming out of prison. But the thing is, I stayed on my own for nearly four months in UK and 28 days on my own here. Um, I would like to tell you how I managed that situation. Being a psychiatrist, being a neuropsychiatrist, I, I tried my level best to manage uh, by what, whatever I'm saying, my, telling my patients or advising my patients, I did it myself. So even in, lock, in quarantine here, I was getting a bit anxious. What's going on? We don't know whether I already contacted the virus while in the flight. So all these anxieties will go through your mind. So, what are the? We, we will start with a positive note, to be honest. Rather than going on to all the psychological issues with COVID, we will go through the positive effects of lockdown first. What are you seeing in these pictures? You are seeing a lot of animals who are roaming around in the roads, in the main roads. You can see the uh, monkeys. That was a picture in Thailand, I think. Then uh, another picture from. Australia or New Zealand, I think a lot of animals on the road, a lot of deers on the road. And the last picture, I think it's from India, peacock on top of the car. So what happened there? 
because of the lockdown, all the animals came out uh, into their own natural environment. All these places were supposed to be their environment. So that's one of the reasons why they have been coming out to the roads. Because it belonged to them originally. We made all these roads there. Maybe through the general we were doing the roads. So it came out. So more sort of naturality, the natural habitat, uh, or they, they realized that the world is theirs. So they came out. So that's a very positive thing that happened, especially to the living beings. We are not just talking about human beings. It's all about living beings. For the next, in that picture, you can see uh, there is a before picture and an after picture. That one, the gateway of India, we can see that uh, in the first one, it is full of pollution and we could not even see that properly. But after lockdown, you could see that pollution has gone down. So two most important things. One is basically the weather and the climate has changed. And we could realize that in Kerala as well, that before that two years back, it was full of floods. It was raining all the time. It went into extreme climate, climatic situations. But now it has calmed down. The climate has calmed down. So we are getting enough rain now, but there are less floods so far. Then the pollution has gone down. That's one of the positive effects. Then what I feel is because we are all with the family and your children all the time, this is the time to improve your family relationships. But there are some issues happening in between. But I think this is the time to improve your family relationships. Especially you can improve the bonding, especially between the parents and the children. Few of my colleagues who have been working in uh, Kotaim Medical College and in different hospitals like Caritas Hospital, Kotaim, they have been telling me that they never spend time with their children for the past 10 or 15 years because they have been very busy. But now they are really enjoying it. They can see one side of the picture. They are, they are realizing that this is good. They shouldn't be working like this all the time. They should be spending some time with children. So that's very important. So the bonding have improved. That's what I have noticed between the parents and children. And also, we are taking a new role as parents now. Like we are becoming teachers of our children. Because of lockdown, all the children, they are all at home having online uh, learning. But we are we as parents we are spending more time to teach them or to um, address their doubts because it is not easy for them to ask doubt to the teachers because uh, there are no face-to-face -face classes happening at the moment then the next thing is i have noticed that the level of expenses has gone down before that we were spending a lot of money we are going out to eat a lot of things were happening, but people have learned how to live with the necessary things. And there is a realization of the essentials. So we, we realized what all things are essential. All these uh, celebrities, all these movies, all the other things that we are watching, we now realize that uh, that's probably not essential for our daily well-being. So, so that realization happened. Then the other thing is, especially in our, our part of the world, in Kerala, we are spending a lot of money for our wedding functions. For example, my wedding was in 2004, and there were 2,000 people who came for my wedding. I still I, I, I can't understand why we are inviting that many number of people. There is no need for that. So the wedding functions are all now 20 people or 50 people, and it's in a simple way, it's more simplistic way, and people realize the meaning of that. Uh, before, before that, it was all like um, hungry dory. They are doing a lot of things. It's all just the celebrations. They were not giving more importance to the, the actual um, role uh, of a husband and the wife. So now I think people are more thinking about it. They have more time to think about what they need doing after the wedding. So uh, that is a good thing that happened. Then the other thing is people were traveling everywhere all the time. Some are no, no time at all. People uh, say that I don't have time. So, but now people are traveling for essential reasons only. 
they have plenty of time to deal with their life. So these are the positive effects that I could see uh, because of the COVID and the lockdown. Unfortunately, there are lots of psychological effects uh, that could happen because of COVID-19. Uh, there are two reasons behind that, uh, the two factors that could lead to psychological effects. One is because of the spread of virus, and the second factor is the effects of quarantine and lockdown. So we were discussing about quarantine before. What quarantine means, it is that self-isolation of a person uh, on their own, uh, in a house or in an enclosed surrounding to prevent infection. And from the mental health perspective, what's happening because of quarantine? I'll come to that in the next slide. First of all, we will discuss about the effects due to the spread of the virus. Because of the spread of virus, people have a fear of infection and fear of death. So that's happening nowadays. Fear of infection is mainly for people who are elderly and with comorbid conditions. People who are elderly, they themselves realize that they have got diabetes or asthma or heart conditions and they realize that they are vulnerable and they could catch the infection easily. So that will affect them and that could lead to more stress in the elderly population. And also not just for the elderly, for uh, the youngsters as well, for the students uh, in your age, um, people could develop anxiety and depression because of the fear of infection or fear of the spread of virus. People could get more anxious thinking about their health in the future, thinking about what's going to happen. And also depression is quite common during these times. The another condition that people could develop is obsessive compulsive disorder. And I have seen a lot of people with that condition is getting worse because of the current uh, coronavirus infection. Obsessive compulsive disorder means, I, I, I know that a lot few people may not know what it is. It is called OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, Obsession means people will be having a lot of repeated thoughts in their head. The thoughts could be because uh, the thoughts of contamination. People may feel that they might their their hands may be full of dirt or germs. So that repeated thoughts happens in their head, and that thoughts makes them feel really anxious. And because of anxiety, they do a compulsive behavior. That is obsessive compulsive disorder. Compulsive behavior means they may be washing their hands several times, 100 times or 200 times during the day. So there are lots of people who does that. And on top of that, if there is coronavirus infection and all the authorities, government, everybody is telling to wash the hands frequently, they will definitely increase the number that they're washing. So the condition could get worse. That's one of the common um, psychological difficulty that I have seen in my clinic, especially with youngsters. Moving on to psychological effects of COVID-19 because of the quarantine and lockdown. The effects of quarantine could lead to isolation, boredom and fatigue. So that those are the three feelings that anybody could get, any age group, even if it is a child, uh, adolescent, youngsters, older adults, anybody could feel isolated and they will feel really bored and fatigued. Fatigue means they lack the energy levels, there will be loss of energy levels. Loss of job and financial stress is another psychological effect. I can understand that a lot of people lost the job, especially in the Middle East and also in our uh, in our country. Those who have been working uh, on a regular basis and they have been growing their salary on a monthly basis, but once they lost the job, uh, the people will get really upset. They will get really stressed out. There will be a lot of uh, financial commitments that they may have. There will be loans. They may be looking after their children, paying the rent. Um, paying the mortgage, 
lot of things might be going on, but they will have to stop doing all those. So they will, they will be at financial stress. Relationship issues and high expressed emotions. What do you mean by high expressed emotions? People may know that. Some people may not. High expressed emotions means if you have a psychological trauma or if someone tell you something, then you will get more emotional and you are showing that on your face or you are expressing it. So those expressions could go up nowadays, especially because you are locked down. And if you are locked down with a person that you don't like, it's very difficult. There may be a lot of people who don't, who have had a lot of uh, relationship issues between husband and wife, but now they are forced to stay on the, stay at home um, together. So that could create a lot of problems. But if you are thinking in a positive way, then that uh, people could make uh, those kind of um, uh, situation fruitful. Then the third, the, the next thing is a lack of education. Uh, because of online classes, uh, that's not uh, possibly happening nowadays, but in some areas of the country, especially in northern India, in some places uh, that the system is not developed properly, uh, the children are not getting education now. So that's also an issue. Smoking, alcohol and substance misuse. Uh, this is another issue during the uh, coronavirus pandemic. That is one of the psychological effects because people are getting bored. They don't have to do anything else. A lot of people are succumbing to substance misuse, alcohol and smoking. Especially in, our, in, in Kerala, the alcohol consumption has grown up. Initially, in the initial phases of lockdown, because of unavailability of alcohol, it has gone down a little bit. But later on, the number of people who are drinking or number of people who have issues with alcohol have gone up. And internet and phone addiction in children is another issue nowadays because we cannot stop our children from using that because they are all telling the excuse that our online class is on the phone. So they'll have to use that. So a lot of parents will allow them to use the phone and computer throughout the day. So that is also an issue because of the current lockdown. And if you look at the elderly population, the memory problems would happen uh, because they are not doing much they are not making their mind and their brain active. So they could get more memory problems. And if there is a person that's already been diagnosed with dementia or some memory problems, the situation could get worse. They might get more confused. So these are the um, psychological issues during the COVID-19 phase. Okay. So we will slowly move on to what all things we should be doing to prevent. So there we go. We are looking at the uh, role of art and literature here. First of all, I am just going through three slides, mainly looking at an overall picture about how we could prevent the mental health issues. The first thing is we need to make sure that people stay connected. People should be connected to their dear and nears especially their family, children, friends. If somebody in our family, especially the elderly population, if they do not know how to use the video calls, or if they do not know how to use the phone, you could teach them. Make sure that the youngsters, especially our students who are all listening to me, you may all have your grandparents at home. You could help them to install the apps like WhatsApp and teach them how to make the video calls. Uh, they will be able to speak to their own peers, their own age group people, uh, who may be staying in a different house, maybe in the same place, but they could chat with their uh, age people who are in their age group. And also they could have a chat with their other children, other siblings. So we need to make sure that they stay connected. And read and talk about positive stories so i'm slowly coming towards the literature part which is reading so if you read positive stories especially if you are staying at home uh, our mind will 
be more tuned towards positive ideas and uh, positive thoughts. But a lot of people killing others and also there are lots of other issues with the new news about the world and Sopna and everything. So people are all hearing a lot of negative stories, just staying at home and listening to this. But what I recommend is read more positive books uh, that may be an autobiography. People could read that and also talk about positive stories. If you, if you are meeting an elderly person, if you are meeting your friend, for example, you talk more about positive stories about coronavirus. About somebody who is uh, who went to hospital but uh, successfully treated and came out. So you can st talk about stories like that. And reading helps people to connect to the entire world. So that the book may be about a different place. It might have happened somewhere. So if you are reading it carefully, then you are connecting yourself to. A different world, you are connecting yourself to different people that's in the book, uh, characters. So the next thing is the prevention of mental health issues with regular exercises. It's very important that we need to consider regular exercises. Uh, you, you need to consider your age and your physical health and light exercises will sustain. So if you are going on to hard exercising, then it may not sustain, you might stop that because you might get aches and pains everywhere. So, artwork is also a method of relaxation exercise. There are different relaxation techniques that we teach people to prevent them from mental health issues. Especially during this lockdown, people could practice breathing exercises, like very simple breathing exercises. We always advise them to sit in a calm place, sit in a neutral posture, take a deep breath in through both the nostrils, then keep it for a couple of seconds, breathe out very slowly through your mouth and focus on your breathing while you do that. So if you do that for five to 10 minutes in the morning and in the evening, it will relax you for sure. And there are other relaxation exercises like yoga, for example, that also helps people. Artwork is a very good method of relaxation exercise that based on your interest, what type of artwork you are interested in. Is it painting? Is it drawing? Is it sculpture making? There are a lot of other small artworks that you could do. So you need to think about what you know and what you could do and what you enjoy and then start doing this. Then these are some of the common principles uh, that I'm going through. One is we need to make sure that you're active throughout the day by scheduling an activity. It's better to have a timetable, especially for children and those who are studying now, those who are students. So my dear students, what I say to you is basically to have a timetable. You don't need to be very rigid with the timetable. You don't need to say that I'll wake up at 6, I'll brush the teeth at 6.10, I'll do this at 6.15. You don't need to write like that. You need, when you make a timetable, you need to be very flexible and then make the timetable according to what you could do. You need to be realistic and then follow it after that. So in your timetable, you need to include time for reading and writing. Writing is a good skill that you can develop during the pandemic phase because you have additional time because you are not traveling anywhere, you are staying at home. So you could think about different themes that you could write. People could write poems. One of my patients who uh, has got anxiety, he's, he has written a lot of poems now. He sent it to me yesterday and uh, he's trying to publish it. So he, he wrote nearly 20 English poems. So that people, people are doing it. And also a lot of people um, are writing stories or small articles that could be published. There are lots of online journals nowadays that people could publish very easily. 
so especially for the literature students it will be very good if you could start writing something uh, small short short articles you can select your own topic and it will be uh, it will not be very difficult to publish in some of the online journals then artwork as we already uh, discussed earlier i will go into the details why the artwork or how the artwork works on your brain and three uh, other pr uh, general principles include you need to take food on time and drink plenty of water and sleep very well so these three things are very important to prevent uh, any mental health or psychological issues during the covid phase okay so i'm just going back to the history a little bit lot of great works of literature came out of exceptional human suffering a lot of uh, pandemics a lot of issues happened in the past the major pandemic happened 100 years ago that was the spanish flu but before that or in between there were a lot of epidemics that happened so when people were suffering there are certain people that thinks quite positively and then they will think about a creative ways of doing things and that's how the nobel prize winner gabriel garcia marquez wrote love in the time of cholera so that he did that when the cholera pandemic was going on and later on it was turned into a movie by mike never and also there was during the plague time journal of the plague year was written by daniel defoe then there are few virus epidemics as well like andromeda strain written by michael crichton and the stand by stephen king all these uh, things were written during the virus epidemics in the past and these two the andromeda strain and the stand they were both popular fiction which are scenarios like what's happening now i have not read those two so you you are already literature students you may be more familiar than me uh, regarding all these books and all and i have seen the last one i have seen the movie called contagion that was directed by steven soderbergh soderbergh in 2011 it came out in 2011 i was that only recently when i was i was in quarantine and it exactly depicts what's going on now so they were all having some a sort of forward thinking and, and and the person who wrote the contagion he wrote it exactly how it's happening now so what i'm trying to say is a lot of great works of literature happened during the pandemic and during the exceptional human suffering another good example is basically sir isaac newton he is the person who found out the universal law of gravitation we all know about the story of apple and isaac newton so what happened is in 1665 bubonic plague epidemic happened in england it was mainly in london area so he was mainly a, his family was mainly a city dweller but they were forced to stay in a farmhouse in woolstow in united kingdom for more than 18 months so he he stayed in quarantine for 18 months there so all, all, all the incidents which led to the discovery of universal law of gravitation happened when he was in quarantine and during that time basically isaac newton spent his time in solitude with his own intellectual thoughts so he was mainly thinking about why the apple went down why the apple is coming down there should be a reason for that otherwise it could actually go up why it came down so he started thinking about that a lot of intellectual thoughts get got stimulated in his mind which led to this discovery eventually then going on to the importance of art art connects us to the foreign exotic and impossible and it connects us to a world where anything is possible so that is the beauty of art it improves the brain development and functioning and it reduces stress and prevents anxiety and depression so it improves the brain development especially those youngsters sitting in front of me you are all students 
your brain is still in the verge of development process yeah, around up to 18 to 20 our brain still develop so this is the time for you to think intellectually and do something about it. so the art work it improves the brain development and function there are lots of studies around that and what we do in our clinical practice is basically we encourage art therapy to prevent psychological issues we do art therapy for people who already develop mental health problems like for example depression those who are severely depressed uh, we could try art therapy sessions with them and we have seen that they improve uh, the definition is i have taken this definition art therapy is an integrative mental health therapy that enriches the lives of individuals families and communities through active art making creative process applied psychological theory and human experience within a psychotherapeutic relationship so that's the definition given to the art therapy so as it is stated in the definition it improves the cognitive and sensory motor functions Cognitive means our memory, our ability to plan things, all these things will improve if you go through art therapy or if you, if you continue with your artwork. Then it could foster self-esteem and self-awareness. So if you, if you have done an artwork and if you are posting it in your Facebook, then a lot of people are liking it and people will be quite happy about that. That could increase your uh, self-esteem or self-confidence will be more and you will be more self-aware as well so you you are you get more awareness about your own uh, skills and it cultivates emotional resilience there are a lot of people who get emotionally upset very quickly but emotional resilience means your ability to control your emotions so that emotional resilience will happen if you are more involved with the literature and art it enhances the social skills that is also right if you are reading a good uh, literature piece, then uh, you you are you came to know about a lot of people, their cultures, and it will be very easy for them to mingle and the reading and art. Conflicts and distress. You may have a lot of conflicts with your friends, maybe with your family members. Those conflicts can be resolved very easily because you will have a peace of mind if you are um, going through literature and art. And involving in art is very important during the COVID pandemic. Then I just want to talk to you about an experiment conducted by Professor Semir Seki that was published in 2011. He was a chair in neuroaesthetics at the University College London. And he wanted to see what happens in the brain when you look at beautiful paintings. For example, when a person enjoys the painting of a landscape or a still life or an abstract painting, he, he wanted to know what's going to happen, what's going to happen with that particular person. So he found out what he did is he looked at X number of participants and he placed a series of 30 different paintings by major artists in front of them. And then what happened is he looked at the brain scans eventually and blood flow increased in certain parts of the brain as much as 10% when compared to the people who have not seen those pictures. So what he described is this is very equivalent to gazing at a loved one. Gazing at a loved one means the presence of your a loved one, what happens in your brain. Similar thing happened when that person looked at a beautiful painting. So basically, the blood flow to the inner parts of the brain improved or it increased when they looked at the beautiful picture. Then, if you connect the heart and the brain, it impacts on the brain wave pattern and develop neural systems. From young age till early teens or late teens, our brain is still developing. So new neural systems are developing. 
and if you are if you are engaged with art it improves the neural system and it improves all the functions of your brain and also especially the midbrain areas midbrain areas there are few names for that like hippocampus thalamus so those are the midbrain areas and those midbrain areas will get uh, easily stimulated if you do artwork or if you read and there are two happy hormones called dopamine and serotonin what happens is the levels of serotonin and dopamine increases with art and these chemicals are released when we do pleasurable activities normally so these are called the happy hormones and the amount of that increases with the help of art according to all the studies in the past then we connect the art and the mental health those people who are engaged very well with reading literature and art it boosts your confidence as we already discussed and it makes us more engaged and resilient so as i already told the emotionally people may may not be uh, people get emotional very quickly so the emotional resilience can be attained through art and it reduces the stress and negative emotions as well it improves anxiety and depression it enhances cognitive abilities and memory so that is one of the reason why we always advise our elderly population to read after retirement we always advise them to read uh, or do something keep your mind active do something like crosswords which will help them so artwork reading it enhances the cognitive abilities and memory and also the chance of using alcohol and substances will go down if you are engaged with literature what happens when you read when you read you are making a lot of photographs in your mind even without being prompted so what happens is when we read carefully there are different ways of reading so it may be skimming through it scanning through it or it may be in depth reading so if you are do, uh, doing a very good in depth reading it will create a lot of images or photos in your mind about what you are reading so that's one way of uh, stimulating your brain then the next thing is spoken word can put your brain to work so if you if you uh, spoken word means verbal verbal communication or verbal reading you need to read aloud not all the time but if you want to learn it, it it is usually better to read it aloud because there is chance that you may get distracted well, I, i have told my 13 year old daughter i have a 13 year old daughter she is in eighth standard now but last year onwards i was telling her to read aloud so that she can uh, easily grasp things but she never listened to me and finally when she is near eight now she started doing that and i could see the results because if you read aloud your brain works much better you will get more stimulation because it is another sensory thing your own voices you are hearing as well so it is more stimulating then reading about experiences is the same as living their life so autobiographies if you read them then we feel that you are going through their path and also that could sort of give you more positivity in your life then different styles of reading would create different patterns in the brain as i told if you are skimming through it you will get an overall picture about that particular topic but you if you are doing an in depth reading it will create a different pattern in your brain and new languages can grow in your brain can grow your brain new languages can grow your brain there was a swedish study a few um, researchers in sweden they have taken a group of foreigners who have been living in sweden who does not know swedish they studied them by teaching them a new language swedish and then they looked at their brains they did the mri scans and the pet scans and they found out that the midbrain structures like hippocampus enlarged a little bit more than what it was before so that means their brain is getting more stimulation when they are studying a new language then brain adapts to reading ebooks within 7 days it may be quite difficult nowadays to go and get the book but there are lots of ebooks available you can read that 
and your brain will get adapted to that within seven days, within a week. You may not be used to that, but you will get used to it. Then the story structure encourages our brain to think in a sequence. Because when we read, in order to think in sequence, our front part of the brain, which is the frontal lobe, needs to be active. So it will improve your ability to plan things, even in future, if you are reading a story, because you are following that story structure. Then, so overall, the changes, the brain structure in a positive way, if you are reading, and deep reading makes us feel empathetic. There's a difference between empathy and sympathy. Sympathy means if your friend's dad died and if you're there, you're crying with your friend is sympathy. But empathy means you, you feel sorry for that person, but at the same time, you are not getting that emotions. So that is empathy means. So professionally, it is better to have an empathetic approach towards others. So deep reading can makes us feel more empathetic. So I will tell you what I did during the quarantine time. Uh, I, I, I realized that it is difficult, it is difficult time on my own for several months. So I scheduled a timetable and I incorporated a regular exercise in that. And also I was um, designing my own clinic here. So I was designing the website for that, designed the logo, uh, so designed each page of that and designed the stationery for the clinic, everything. So I have, I have done things, I have set things in my mind and I have set a timetable to do things. So that's what I did in my quarantine. And I have done four paintings during the quarantine as well. Uh, I used to draw and paint in the past. The last time I did was when I was studying for my medicine. So that was like uh, near more than 20, 22 years back. So I have, I have done paintings after that. Then I wrote two articles, one on the use of telepsychiatry in India, what are telepsychiatry principles we use in India, that was for the Royal College of Psychiatrists in London. And also I have done an article for uh, the college magazine in Indo-American Hospital that was on stigma in mental health. So I have done two articles as well. So I started writing a few other things as well during the uh, quarantine period. So I felt that uh, generally I managed my anxiety by, by going through uh, all these uh, activities, especially the artwork. And this is the artwork that I have done during my quarantine period. This is one of them. I have done three or four. And, and then I'm just winding up, winding down. It's nearly time now. So what we should do during lockdown, we need to schedule the activities. We need to think, sit and think what all activities you like and you enjoy, and then schedule the activities accordingly. And make sure that you put some time for reading and writing. If you, if you're, even if you are not interested, you could develop that habit during this period then artwork and painting, that's also a good thing to do, but make sure that you do regular exercises, have a proper diet, and boost your immune system. Boost your immune system by taking more vitamin C containing food materials like lemon or oranges, so that's quite good to improve your immunity, and turmeric powder um, is quite helpful, ginger is helpful, so you can you utilize all these things during the corona time and boost your immunity and main thing is you need to help others especially the elderly population during the corona time and in summary we have already uh, gone through all these areas i have went through the overview of covid 19 effect of covid 19 both positive and adverse effects psychological issues how literature and art art helped us all of literature and art in preventing or managing psychological issues. And please, please do not forget social distancing, masks, and hand washing. That is very important. We all need to make sure that we, we all, all stay healthy, stay healthy and happy during the COVID time. So thank you very much. And yeah, this is uh, my clinic.
that I am working now. It is in Kotem, it's uh, uh, in Palam, uh, that's near Kotem. It's called Brainworks Neuropsychiatry Center. We developed it mainly for the children and youngsters with any sort of psychological issues. And, the, and uh, these are my contact details. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Jobi Skaria. It was uh, very much an informative session. Thank you for your insights. Uh, since we have reached almost 3 o'clock, as I mentioned earlier, this is a Q&A session. Uh, we can go for questions. Your questions can be typed in the chat box, which I'll be reading out to Dr. Jobi. So please feel free to post your questions in chat box. The first question I could see that, in your view, how long will it take? Uh, let me go to the inbox just for now. The question is, in yeah, your how view, long? Yeah. how long will it take for normalcy to be restored? Yeah, this is a very difficult question. Uh, when I was in lockdown in England, I felt that everything will go back to normal in a month. But it, it never happened. So looking at all the literature and the work, it will stay, it looks like it will stay, this is my personal opinion, it will possibly stay till the end of next year, 2021. Because I feel that the virus will be there, but it will be well controlled. That's one thing. That is a good news. And the vaccine might come out in October, November time. But commercially, it will take time to get manufactured. It, will, it may take two or three months and then it will it needs to be distributed to the local population that takes time as well so i would say maybe by february march we may be able to get the vaccine done so next year february march possibly we will be able to go back to our previous normals and also there is one more thing is uh, basically the, the virulence of the virus might come down as well. Because initially... Hello? The, the virulence of the virus have come down now. Initially, in the initial phases, the, the virus was more active and the deaths were really high. It looks like that is coming down a little bit. Okay, there is another question that I could see. You said family bonding and relationships have become stronger, but many studies say that the domestic violence has increased in this pandemic. What is your thought about this? So I, I in, the, in the session, I already thought about two sides of that. First of all, if you already have got issues within the relationship, a lot of people are forced to stay together, especially husband and wife. They didn't like each other for years, but now, this is the first time they are staying mm -hmm. together. Those circumstances could lead to domestic violence. That is one of the reasons why many studies say that domestic violence has increased. But based on my personal experience and also by talking to several people, I feel that, and also the, my patients as well, I feel that the family bonding and relationships have become stronger in a lot of families because they did not have time to spend with their family members. They love their family, but they did not have time to spend with their family members. And those in those families, the relationship has become strong. So we have uh, one more question that is in the inbox. This is from yeah. Abel Justin. Literature yeah. not only delivers materials to control stress and anxiety, but also those that speak about the futility and existentialism of life. Do you think it would make a difference in our mental state? If so, how? Okay. Yeah, as I already mentioned, literature, literature definitely controls the stress and anxiety. And also those that speak about the futility and existence existentialism of life, uh, it would definitely make a difference in our mental state. Because the literature I'm reading could basically
stimulates our brain structures. As I already told, it stimulates the brain structures, especially the uh, the central part where the midbrain structures are involved in controlling our emotions. For example, happiness, sadness, or uh, even addiction, addiction issue, uh, getting used to a substance. All these things uh, are getting controlled by your midbrain structures. And the reading have a lot of studies that I already mentioned a couple of studies. A lot of studies mention that the volume of your midbrain and also the blood flow to the midbrain increases when you go through an artwork or when you read. So the literature definitely improves our mental state, especially those who are an angry person or those who have got a lot of anger issues or changes in their mood. Their, their mood changes or mood variation could get better once they succumb to the reading habits. So we have one more question. And this is from Deepa Manjali. Oh, yeah. Sir, do you think music ha also have a high therapeutic value on this time? What is the scope of music in psychology? Yeah, that's also a good question. It's very similar to the art therapy. We have got music therapy as well in a lot of hospitals. So, music therapy has got therapeutic value, especially in this time, because that will soothe your mentality. It, that will create more positive thoughts and also your stress levels will come down with the music. We have we give music therapy for children with autistic traits as well. Some children may have communication difficulties or autism. There are certain clinics, uh, especially in England and Ireland, they have seen some clinics which utilizes the music therapy to improve their communication and also to improve their uh, behavior. So music have got a very good role in the psychological aspects. So those people who are very sad and if they listen to the music, as a soothing music, then things will improve. So definitely music has got a role in improving the psychology. I can see a couple of questions as well. Uh, how do we manage the kids at home, children below five, when there is a lot of restriction on them in terms of their socialization. I'm also worried about this because even my children, they are staying at home all the time. And um, uh, the negative side is uh, we are sending our children to school mainly to improve their social skills. Otherwise, we could teach all the children at home. So we are sending them to improve their um, social skills. So not be part of that society could lead to a lot of issues. There are certain things that we could do. One is, again, the communication is the key. You can always encourage your children to speak to their friends. If they were in a nursery, and if they have a few friends, you can um, take an initiative to call their parents over phone or, or a video chat and speak to them. That's one thing. And the second thing is, a timetable is very important. So you need to set a timetable for the children and make sure that they follow the timetable as well. Uh, that will help them to um, be, they'll be able to uh, order things around and also they will have a proper routine. That routine needs to be there. So we need to make sure that they do have a timetable. They, know, they do have set times to study and also you should encourage them to play just outside not, not going away from home but just in front of your house to have some fresh air and play physical activity is very important for the children rather than letting them sit in front of the laptop or the So we yeah. have a similar question from Jimmy James. Yeah. So how do we manage the kids at home, children below five, when that? Really sorry, I think you answered the question. No, no, that's, that's the one that they answered. Yeah, yeah. The next next one is little examples of similar plagues in the literature. Uh, no, I'm not sure about the uh, similar examples in the literature. 
at all. I have just go went through a few. Uh, that's all. But definitely, this is the time for you to uh, be more creative and then write something. So the next question is: Who are the highest level of risk? I answered above sixty, but they showed me that the answer covers two options. How highest? Okay. So it is not just the age; it is mainly the comorbid factors. So the highest is people with comorbid conditions. Even if they are less than sixty, and if they have severe comorbid conditions, and if their um, immunity is quite less, then they are highly likely to develop COVID-19. But definitely, the next highest is people who are above the age of sixty. Yeah, the next question is, do you think visual media, including films, can also have therapeutic effects in people? That is, that is true, but the main thing is you need to select the movies. That is also very important. Selection of movies is very important. There are lots of uh, uh, low quality movies, which is not going to add up anything. There is no therapeutic value in that, but it's mainly, it's all about selecting that according to your own taste. And also some classic movies, you go to select that, and that will definitely have an impact on that will have a therapeutic effect. Yeah, the next question that I could see is how many countries are affected by COVID-19? What according to you is the perfect number? There is no perfect number like that, but the countries affected is nearly 206 countries, I think, as of now, plus. Uh, seven or eight territories, so it is coming around 212 or 213 countries and territories are affected by COVID-19, which is nearly almost all the countries. I think that's it. I think I have answered all the questions. If you have more questions, you, are, you can post your questions in the chat box. Yeah. Or you can email me. You can email me anytime. Uh, in my email box, I have given the address there. It's still there, which is mybrainworks1 at gmail.com. And you can always email me. Sir, I guess we have covered almost all the questions. Yeah. Any more questions? And also just informing you guys that uh, we have made the modification in the Google form, uh, which one of you pointed out. So probably you can do it one more time. And also thank you for pointing out. It looks like, there are, it looks like there are no more questions. So I'll yes. wind up. So I would just like to, I already, uh, I would like to thank everyone for giving me the opportunity to talk today. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Now over to Professor Nia Mapio for the word of thanks. Hello all, sorry for that brief technical glitch. Respected Hello. principal, Ms. Lali Kesriya, eloquent speaker for the day, Dr. Joby Iskaria, chief coordinator, Ms. Navita Elizabeth Jose, and our dear participants, principals, faculty members, research scholars, and students from many other institutions across the country. I deem it a great honor to propose the vote of thanks to all of you who have helped us 
in making this seminar such a resounding success. I take this opportunity to first thank our principal for her encouragement and her thought-provoking address. Thank you, ma'am. On behalf of everybody here, I express my profound sense of gratitude to our distinguished speaker, Dr. Joby Skaria, for his insightful presentation. It was a very systematic approach, beginning with the problems, dilemmas, and addictive behavior that can ensue with such unprecedented times. The different preventive measures and relaxation techniques detailed by you, sir, will definitely benefit us by ensuring the the ways to better our psychological landscape as we cope with this rapidly changing lifestyle. This webinar has achieved its emphatic success by the active participation of all of you participants. I thank each and every one of you for your effectual involvement. I thank our chief coordinator, Navita Ma'am, and my co-coordinator, Shruti Elsa Jos, and our technical team, Tina Ma'am, Manoj Sir, and Jay Sir, and the managing and organizing committee members for their ardent efforts. I would also like to thank the spiritual and spiritual guidance and support extended by all faculty members of the Department of English, St. Stephen's College, Urubur, for extending guidance and cooperation, especially our head of the department, Mrs. Bindu Cheria. And thank you all. I would like to once again remind you that the feedback link is updated in the chat box and also we have updated the information and registration form regarding the next webinar which will be conducted on 11th of august in our site i have also shared the site link in the chat box thank you all So once again, thanking each and every one of you who participated in this webinar and made this a success. Sincere thanks to Jobby's career, Dr. Jobby's career. Yeah, I'm still around, still around.